Some are high-tech and cutting-edge, some are low-tech and brutal, others technically might not even be weapons at all. These are the deadly weapons that could start World War III. Just about any weapon can start a war, including a world war, but in this multipolar world a world war would spread quickly involving many countries and pitting two great powers or more against each other. All the weapons on this list have the chance of causing escalations in a hurry, so let's kick this off with a much feared weapon that's all the scarier because it could be anywhere. Number 10. The Dirty Bomb Terrorism has been a problem around the world for decades, with rogue agents of militant groups striking against their enemies by setting off bombs or opening fire in crowded locations. These are rarely fully traceable to any state actor, with rogue groups like Al-Qaeda, ISIS, Hamas, the Provisional IRA, and others having enough deniability to not bring the full force of a government down on the country that they're supporting, usually. That wasn't the case when Al-Qaeda struck the United States in 2001, as the ensuing anger kicked off not one but two wars in Iraq and Afghanistan that raged for two decades in one case. But what if the next terror attack was worse? Dirty bombs are one of the most feared weapons in any terror army's potential arsenal, because the damage they cause can last far longer than the explosion. These radiological dispersal devices are usually standard bombs, but contaminated with enough radioactive material to spread poisonous radioactive material over an area and contaminate it for a long time. In low-yield cases like this, which might be the most common type for freelance terrorists to be able to assemble, the symptoms might not be obvious at first and would only become clear when many people are contaminated and sickened after the fact. But in a higher-yield device, not only could a dirty bomb kill many people, but it could contaminate a chunk of a city for months or even years. And once that happens, all bets are off. The most likely flashpoint for a situation like this might be Iran, as the Islamic Republic has long been accused of funding terrorism around the world. If a dirty bomb goes off in a city in the US or another NATO member and the terrorist is found to have ties to Iran's militant government, that could be the final push for a hawkish government to begin strikes in Iran, especially as fears of Iran getting a nuclear weapon are ramping up again. However, while Iran is largely diplomatically isolated, it does have close allies in China and Russia, especially the latter, for whom it is a key arms supplier. Which could mean a bloody proxy war in the Middle East, and proxy wars always have the chance of turning into a full-fledged global conflict if the two proxies start shooting directly at each other. But the more pressing threat from Iran might be over the skies of Ukraine right now. Number 9. Iranian Drones Russia's war in Ukraine has not been going according to plan, to put it lightly. From Kyiv by April to still fighting over the same 20% of Ukraine Russia seized in the opening days of the war, Russia's been reduced to shelling Kyiv from afar and fighting with brutal human wave attacks that see them losing soldiers en masse. Part of the problem is economic sanctions that have cut them off from weapon supplies and their Cold War era arsenal is running out fast. Few countries are willing to sell Russia weapons for a widely condemned war and even Putin's allies in China have been hedging their bets. Xi Jinping might want to see the West take a black eye, but he's not going to jump in unless he thinks Russia can win. That leaves one country as especially key to the war effort. Iran hasn't historically had the closest ties to Russia, but they do have one thing in common – they both hate the United States. Putin and Raisi might also be commiserating on how to put down popular revolts when the people get angry, but whatever the reason, Iran has been very willing to supply Russia with weapons. These include Iranian-made drones, which are designed to be remote-controlled, missile-bearing merchants of death. These drones are fast but vulnerable and are aimed at overwhelming Ukraine's defenses, if not actually striking their target, then causing Ukraine to expend valuable weaponry on fighting them. But they stand a chance of backfiring in a very big way. Drones are remote controlled and that means there needs to be someone on the other side. How is Russia's drone operation program going? No one knows, but given the state of the rest of their military, we're not too optimistic. Ukraine's also bordered by other countries including NATO member Poland and EU candidate Moldova. There have already been friendly fire incidents in the war across the border, but a drone strike in Poland, be it by user error or mechanical misfire, could be the deadliest flashpoint yet in a costly war. An attack on one NATO member is an attack on all. And while NATO would likely accept a Russian apology rather than going to war, Putin's more likely to respond with belligerence, which means all bets are off. But it's not always the aggressor's weapons that could trigger a larger war. Number 8. F-16s Ukraine's President Volodymyr Zelensky has not been shy about making requests of NATO for help, and with each Ukrainian victory he's become bolder now asking for long-range weapons that'll allow him to take the fight back to Russia. This will allow him to strike at Russian-occupied territories like Crimea and the Donbass, as well as potentially at arms depots and troop deployments within Russia itself. 
The US has been hesitant to grant these requests for fear of angering Putin, but that resistance seems to be lessening. After all, Putin has been calling every NATO move a potential nuclear escalation, so what's the worry about some planes, right? But these aren't just any planes. The F-16 Fighting Falcon might soon be heading for Ukraine, and this powerhouse fighter jet might just be a game-changer in the war. Designed as an all-weather, multi-role aircraft, it's one of the best tools in the U.S. arsenal. Highly maneuverable and equipped with long-range surface-to-air missiles, a cannon, as well as the capability to carry heavy bombs, it's ideal for air combat, and might just plug the one hole in Ukraine's arsenal. The country's air force has been a weak point, but the F-16 has a good chance at giving Ukraine air superiority over its own territory. The question is, what comes next? Because Ukraine has become increasingly bold about striking back at Russia. According to the laws of war, this is fair game. Ukraine hasn't actively targeted civilian infrastructure the way Russia has, and it's not an escalation to retaliate with an attack on enemy military infrastructure. However, Putin may see it differently. While the most publicized attack within Russian territory was actually by a Russian militia, and the drone attacks on the Kremlin are heavily considered to be a false flag, if US F-16s begin striking Russia regularly, Putin might consider it a direct attack on him by the country that provided them. And then all bets are off. Or he might be bluffing again. But that's why many more cautious military minds are urging the US to hold off on the fighter jets for fear it might escalate the war in Ukraine to a full Russia v NATO conflict. But the most likely flashpoint for US weapons may be half a world away. Number 7. AGM-158 JASM for all of Vladimir Putin's threats of World War III, most analysts believe the potential for a larger war isn't in Europe at all, it's in the Taiwan Strait and the South China Sea, where China's been increasingly aggressive. China claims the island nation of Taiwan is its territory, despite Taiwan being independent for over 70 years. It's also encroaching on the Philippines, Vietnam, and other Southeast Asia nations, which has led these countries, plus Japan and South Korea, to form an increasingly tight alliance with the US. As China ramps up war games around Taiwan, the US has unofficially vowed to defend its ally and its incredibly important semiconductor industry, and they're willing to provide the weapons needed. China's proximity to Taiwan means it likely has an early edge in the conflict, and it'll try to encircle and occupy the island before the US can provide aid. But that only works if Taiwan can't defend itself and hold out long enough to get help there. And that might be a lot harder for China to accomplish thanks to a new US-made missile. The JASM is a powerful air-launched cruise missile developed by Lockheed Martin, designed for close-range standoff combat. While it's currently being used by the US, Australia, Finland, and Poland, the US has signed a deal to provide the missile to Taiwan, which will go a long way toward ensuring Taiwan can hold out during those critical early hours. But it may also increase the odds of a global conflict. World wars don't always happen through escalations. Sometimes it's a decision, and it seems like this one is the one US may be willing to make. It has repeatedly reiterated its commitment to defending Taiwan in the face of Chinese aggression. And while Europe may not be as willing to follow suit, it's likely the US will have many allies in the region. After all, Japan and South Korea know they could be next if China keeps expanding its sphere of control. And that's why these countries are working together to prevent China from successfully encircling Taiwan by blowing their ships out of the water with some of the best missiles in the world, if need be. And if that first step works out for China, the next step is likely open conflict between the world's two most powerful militaries. Now let's head back to the Middle East, where the path to destruction may be deep underground. Number 6. Secret Nuclear Programs Within a short period after the Second World War, the number of nuclear nations grew rapidly. The US was joined by the Soviet Union, and soon afterward by the UK, France, and China, and those countries got together and said, hey, maybe we should just keep it between us, and pass the Non-Proliferation Treaty. It didn't exactly work. Since then, India, Pakistan, North Korea, and allegedly Israel have each developed nuclear weapons, and while sanctions followed, there was no putting that genie back in the bottle. The next country to join in the club might be Iran, whose belligerent leadership has been repeatedly boasting of using those weapons against bitter enemies in nearby Israel. But hold on, because Israel might be able to answer back. It's believed that Israel got nuclear weapons as far back as the 1950s, with seismology studies showing suspicious activity that would correspond with nuclear tests. 
but because it would have been in violation of the Non-Proliferation Treaty, it simply didn't tell anyone. Israel's been very secretive about its nuclear program for more than half a century, but leaks indicate that it has well over 100 nuclear weapons, maybe more than 300, which would put it as one of the largest nuclear powers in the world. Israel has long considered a nuclear Iran to be an existential threat to its security. While it's not believed to have any long-range delivery systems, it is likely to have the capability of responding in kind to an Iranian attack. Or to strike first. There have been many attempts to preempt the Iranian nuclear program, including a controversial diplomatic deal that was brokered by the Obama administration. However, it fell apart under Obama's successor, who declared the deal to be fake news. Since then, Iran has been enriching uranium again and is believed to be close to having the capability to assemble a bomb. Israel might decide to strike first and target its nuclear infrastructure, which would be a complex and dangerous operation. And with the US closely aligned with Israel, and Russia seeing Iran as a key to its weapon supply plans, any conflict between the two Middle Eastern nations could easily turn into a proxy war that would spread far beyond the region. But sometimes it's not even the weapon, it's the outcome. Number 5. Environmental Warfare A smart military knows you don't just fight in an environment, you can manipulate it to your benefit. This has been especially key in the war in Ukraine, as we saw in the opening days. As Russia was closing in on encircling Kyiv, Ukraine pulled off an extremely risky move, blowing a dam that flooded Russian pontoon bridges, allowing them to hold the city. A year later, Russia copied that move in a far more horrific way, blowing a massive dam in eastern Ukraine, complicating Ukraine's counteroffensive, but at the cost of a massive ecological and humanitarian disaster. This primarily affected the Russian-occupied parts of Ukraine, and the toll of the internationally condemned move may never be fully known. But the problem is, when you mess with nature, you don't know where the mess stops. World War I was defined by the use of chemical weapons, which scarred and killed countless soldiers. However, it also scarred the land, to the point that there are still areas of France that are essentially no-go zones. Unexploded ordnance still litters the battlefield, and the soil was so thoroughly poisoned that nothing grows in some spots. It serves as a living monument to the horror of war and a warning that it should never happen again. But an increasingly desperate Putin might not see it that way. Instead, he may see the ecological disaster of the Kokova Dam collapse as a rare victory in the war, one that he should repeat. After all, if he can't defeat Ukraine on the battlefield, he just may be able to make large swaths of the country uninhabitable. But ecological disasters don't respect borders. Much like in the case of Iranian drones, the biggest risk in this strategy is Ukraine's proximity to other countries including Poland. Poland is close both to Ukraine and Putin's puppet state in Belarus. So far, Putin has relied heavily on attacking Kyiv with missile strikes to no real strategic benefit except to cause the city a lot of pain. If he escalates this, potentially by trying to cause ecological disaster in the region by targeting Ukraine's water or food supply, it could have unintended consequences. What if the effects spill over into Poland, and Poland considers invoking Article 5 as a result? Putin would no doubt argue that he took no direct action against Poland, and as such he isn't responsible, but much like the flow of water, once the drums of war start beating, they're very hard to stop. What could cause a war the fastest? How about a power outage? Imagine you wake up one morning, turn on the lights, and nothing works. TV's out, the microwave's out, you better get on the internet to see what's going on. But that's shut down too. Now it's time to panic. That's what it would look like if an electromagnetic pulse went off targeting a country's power grid. The first occurrence of this event was actually natural, the Carrington Event, an intense geomagnetic storm that occurred in 1859 and devastated much of the rudimentary electric infrastructure at the time. Back then, it was an annoyance and a curiosity to be studied, but today it could be a global disaster that would take years for a country to bounce back from. Which naturally meant it was time to develop some weapons that had that power. Electromagnetic bombs were created a long time ago, but they weren't the focus of the weapon, that would be the nuclear blast. Most nuclear bombs cause a pulse that knocks out power to a large area, but that's usually just a side effect that the people would barely notice amid the destruction. However, many countries thought it would be useful to be able to neutralize a country's power grid in a sneak attack without the devastating impact of a nuclear bomb. Electromagnetic bombs, while top secret, are believed to have been designed by several countries, including the US, and could be used as a first strike by a country that wanted to attack a nearby country and wanted to make sure that a larger power couldn't immediately begin. But there are those darn unintended consequences once again. 
An electromagnetic pulse is a blunt weapon. It wouldn't just knock out the power like a typical power outage, where you could still use all cordless devices. It would disrupt just about every major electronic device in the region. That includes emergency medical equipment, traffic lights, even airplanes, which means commercial planes could start falling out of the sky. Even if the bomb itself didn't kill anyone, the odds are the casualties of an immediate EMP blast would be in the thousands, if not higher. And it could climb rapidly as the victims struggled to restore power. This would be a deadly attack that would almost definitely provoke a larger war, one that the aggressor would hope would go in their favor thanks to the time advantage. But that's why these same countries might want to go for a more subtle approach. Number 3. Cyber Warfare Could the most important warriors of the coming war not be the soldiers or the pilots or the generals, but the nerds? The vanguard of security and espionage may be housed in top-secret government research facilities, tirelessly hacking away at other countries' firewalls. Spying has been part of the war, both hot and cold, for centuries, and in the past it was a high-risk endeavor. Spies had little choice but to go behind enemy lines to get vital documents, and would often face torture and a firing squad if they were caught. It was lower risk but harder to try to turn a citizen of the country you were spying on. However, now countries are able to get information from within another country's classified files without ever leaving their borders. And these spies might be aiming to do far more than just gather intel. The US has reportedly accused China of spying on its government websites, a charge China has denied. The odds are both countries spy on each other, and on their allies as well. However, cyber warfare has gone far beyond simple intelligence gathering, and countries might be looking to scam artists for inspiration. One of the most nefarious techniques used by criminals in recent years has been ransomware, hacking websites and computer systems and locking them until an untraceable cryptocurrency payment is delivered. Many hospital networks have been forced to pay the fee to get their systems back online. A hostile government could easily apply the same tactic to key government or military systems with proper preparation. But it may just be a case of delaying the inevitable. For instance, if China was to hack the US's communication systems to cut off intelligence and keep the US from responding as they attack Taiwan, would the US get their systems back online, see that China blockaded Taiwan and then simply say, you got us, good game? Or would they be more likely to consider the cyber attack an act of war itself and be even more motivated to respond and break the blockade? The cyber warfare specialists may have escalated the hacking game to the point that they can be a force to be reckoned with in any major conflict, but they can't account for one thing. Eventually everything's going to be back online and then all bets are off. But the biggest X factor in the world's weapon stores has been hanging there for decades. Number 2. Russia's Nuclear Arsenal There are only a few constants in life. Death, taxes, and Vladimir Putin threatening the use of nuclear weapons. Ever since the war in Ukraine began, Putin's belligerence in response to any aid provided to Ukraine has been intended to scare off the West. But it hasn't worked, and with every red line that NATO breezes past with no response, more and more people consider his nuclear threats to be a whole lot of hot air. However, as the war grows closer to Russia and slips further away from his control, Putin clearly wants everyone to see him as a wild card who may decide to let slip the dogs of war. After all, Putin controls the largest nuclear arsenal in the world. Or does he? That's the rub, because Russia definitely does have the largest number of nuclear missiles in the world, a staggering total of 5,889 at last count, more than enough to destroy the world multiple times over. This is way down from the country's peak of 45,000 during the Cold War, but it's more than enough to power a nuclear triad that's capable of hitting anywhere in the world. Putin wants to maintain an aura of strategic ambiguity. Not only does he repeatedly threaten to use them if Russia is attacked, but Russia is also only one of a few nuclear powers to not have a no-first-strike policy. That means Russia reserves the right to use nuclear weapons to resolve a conventional war, and what that trigger is no one knows. But in reality, Putin's arsenal might be much smaller. Putin's nuclear stockpile is huge, but it's almost entirely Cold War era weapons, and many of them spent a long time in other countries like Kazakhstan or Ukraine. No one is sure how many of them were maintained well enough to still be in working order. While Russia has boasted of developing new weapons, they haven't made much progress and recent missile tests saw failures. No one knows which of the weapons would hit their target, with some possibly even blowing up on the launch pad, probably taking Putin with them. That makes the Russian nuclear arsenal the world's biggest game of Russian roulette. But no one's willing to take that one-sixth chance lightly. And that's exactly the sort of Damocles Putin is hoping works in his favor when he makes his threat. But no weapon is more dangerous and unpredictable than this final one, because it's alive. Number 1. Bioweapons 
It was 2019 when the world first saw a mysterious new virus spreading around Wuhan. It took just a few months for the virus to spread from China to the rest of the world. As COVID-19 killed millions around the world, rumors spread just as fast about where it came from. The prevailing theory was that it mutated from an animal and was spread to humans in an exotic meat market. But other theories circled around biological research labs in Wuhan, ones that might have been partially funded and co-run by the US. Conspiracy theories ran wild, with some blaming China, others blaming the US. Was COVID-19 a bioweapon? It's not likely. It hit every country equally and wasn't nearly deadly enough to be an effective targeted weapon. But future cases may not be so lucky. The prevailing theory of a lab leak now centers around what's known as gain-of-function research, where scientists genetically alter an organism in ways that make it more effective. This can boost its reproductive rate, infectiousness, or transmissibility. It can even make it able to infect different hosts, which could make an animal virus able to infect humans. This is usually done to better understand viruses and how they would interact with humans, but it's also considered very risky. After all, making a virus stronger could open Pandora's box, and once that's open, there's no closing it. And if things get bad enough, it could provoke the next great war. COVID-19 certainly seemed to drive a lot of people out of their minds. As anyone who argued over a mask or tried to get toilet paper in March 2020 found out, but the ambiguity of the situation kept things from spiraling out of control. We might never know just how it began, but what happens in the future if a virus leaks or is deliberately released from a lab and causes a far deadlier pandemic? It's unlikely cooler heads will prevail, and the outcome of that conflict may cause casualties that would dwarf the actual virus. Check out Most Evil Experiments in the History of Mankind for more details on science gone wrong. Or watch Most Deadly U.S. Military Weapon right now for the best of the best in the arsenal.